magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun Hey, this is Gino from The Secret Kindergarten, and thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio, the number one listener-supported radio station in the world. And a big shout-out to all my friends out there in Texas! I would love to go to Texas one day. I would like to read you a poem. Now, this poem... It's an Australian poem, but you wouldn't tell, be able to tell because it's a poem about a frog. This poem's called Moon Frog. The moon slid down the sky. The froggy whispered, soon, if only it comes close enough, I'll leap onto the moon. The moon slid lower still. The froggy paused. Then, hop, his long legs launched him at the moon and landed him on top. The moon sailed smoothly on along its starry course with Froggy proudly riding like a jockey on a horse. (laughs) I love that poem. And we're going to follow that up with Frog Pond by Nancy Stewart from nancymusic.com. Let's go down to the Frog Pond. Let's go down to the Frog Pond. Let's go down to the Frog Pond and listen to the froggies sing. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Let's go to the barnyard let's go over to the barnyard let's go over to the barnyard and listen to the piggies sing A 
song for singing when it's light and a lullaby to sing at night. Every mother has a song to sing. Every daddy has a song to sing. Every daddy has a song to sing. You hear him holler out a song or humming quietly along. Every daddy has a song. Every grandma has a song to sing. Every grandma has a song to sing. And when she sings her song to you, then it becomes your song too. Every grandma has a song to sing. Every grandpa has a song to sing. Every grandpa has a song to sing. Song of happiness or strife, the song he's carried all his life. Every grandpa has a song to sing. Everybody has a song to sing. Everybody has a song to sing. And when we're singing the same song, you know we just can't do it wrong. Everybody has a song. Singing the same song, you know we just can't do it wrong. Everybody has a song to sing. Everybody has a song to sing. Speaking of jumping, I love cats, and I love how they can jump. I love the way they jump, and we're going to play an American nature myth, and this one is called "Why the Cat Always Falls Upon Her Feet." Why the cat always falls upon her feet? Some magicians are cruel, but others are gentle and good to all the creatures of the earth. One of these good magicians was one day traveling in a great forest. The sun rose high in the heavens, and he lay down at the foot of a tree. Soft green moss grew all about him. The sun shining through the leaves made flecks of light and shadow upon the earth. He heard the song of the bird and the lazy buzz of the wasp. The wind rustled the leafy boughs above him. 
All the music of the forest lulled him to slumber, and he closed his eyes. As the magician lay asleep, a great serpent came softly from the thicket. It lifted high its shining crest and saw the man at the foot of the tree. I will kill him, it hissed. I could have eaten that cat last night if he had not called, Watch, little cat, watch. I will kill him. I will kill him. Closer and closer the deadly serpent moved. The magician stirred in his sleep. Watch, little cat, watch, he softly said. The serpent drew back, but the magician's eyes were shut, and it went closer. It hissed its war cry. The sleeping magician did not move. The serpent was upon him. No, far up in the high branches of the tree, above his head, the little cat lay hidden. She had seen the serpent when it came from the thicket. She watched as it went closer and closer to the sleeping man, and she heard it hiss its war cry. The little cat's body quivered with anger and with fear, for she was so little and the serpent was so big. The magician was very good to me, she thought, and she leaped down upon the serpent. Oh, how angry the serpent was. It hissed, and the flame shot from its eyes. It struck wildly at the brave little cat, but now the cat had no fear. Again and again she leaped upon the serpent's head, and at last the creature lay dead beside the sleeping man who it had wished to kill. When the magician awoke, the little cat lay on the earth, and not far away was the dead serpent. He knew at once what the cat had done, and he said, Little cat, what can I do to show you honor for your brave fight? Your eyes are quick to see, and your ears are quick to hear. You can run very swiftly. I know what I can do for you. You shall be known over the earth as the friend of man and you shall always have a home in the home of man. And one thing more, little cat, you leaped from the high tree to kill the deadly serpent, and now, as long as you live, you shall leap where you will, and you shall always fall upon your feet. Indeed. Hey, hey. Are you ready to play a game? Don't know if you remember this one. Name that musical instrument. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to play a sound, and you're going to guess the instrument. Okay, let's go. Let's go with the first one. Whoa, rock and roll. Which instrument was that? That's right. It was an electric guitar. Okay. You ready for the next one? Here we go. Do you know what instrument this one is? I feel like I'm supposed to start singing. Come on, what instrument is this one? It's a piano. Okay, this is a tricky one. You gotta listen quickly, ready? What instrument was that? Sounds like somebody hitting something. That's right, it's a drum. Do you know what kind of drum it is? Okay, one more time. It is a snare drum. That's which drum that is. A snare drum. Okay, this one, this is a bit tricky too. Here we go. Did you hear that? Whoa, this is quite hard. It sort of goes, 
Did you hear that? That's somebody hitting something too. Anyone know what that is? I'll tell you, somebody hitting something. So it's a drum. That one's called a hi-hat. That's right. And a hi-hat and a snare drum, you can find them as part of a drum kit that a rock and roll drummer might play. Well, you did very well. And that's the end of Name That Musical Instrument. And now you know <laughs> what time it is. <laughs> you know it's nature time. We are going to talk about, oh my gosh, it's an American animal. It's a chipmunk. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I've never met a chipmunk before, but I love them. Chipmunks are named because of the chip chip sound they make called chipping. <laughs> They also make other sounds like chucking and trilling. The trilling sound is often made by them while being chased by predators. These are often of short frequency and do not repeat trilling sounds. What does that even mean? The chipping and chucking sounds are somewhat similar. They are most active during the daytime and chipmunks collect as much food as they can to munch on later yum 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 in human habitats they can eat vegetables and grains that are cultivated and hence sometimes considered pests oh poor little chipmunk they love to live in isolation and as soon as they are two months old they separate from their mothers to live alone. They do not interact with other chipmunks very much. The entrance of their burrows might look very small, but they can go as deep as 20 to 30 feet. Whoa, the chipmunks are solitary creatures and they are very protective of their burrows. They get aggressive when someone tries to intrude in their, into their habitat and good on them. Some chip chipmunks might enter others burrows during winters to steal food that's very naughty the chipmunks often build emergency caches so they never run out of food during winters what a clever chipmunk the chipmunks do not survive on body fats during winters like other hibernating animals they rather store food during summers to be used in the winters their cheeks have got pouches in which they can store large amounts of food while collecting and searching for food. So that's why they've got puffy cheeks. They take this food to their burrows and save it for later. During winters, this cache of food is their source of energy. They depend on their, ca their cache of food during winters and they wake up every few days to feed on them their body temperature decreases as well as their heart rate so they can survive the winter. They seem dead during hibernation because of their, well, because they're breathing less. They're breathing very softly and slowly. The mothers are very protective of their pups. After two months, the pups separate from their mother and build their own individual burrows and start collecting food there. The spirit of the chipmunk calls on us to go out in nature to take the time to explore anything that attracts our attention. 
I wonder if if you have any cool stories about chipmunks or you people out there in America. I can imagine there's probably some bad stories too if you're trying to grow <laughs> grow things in your garden, I imagine. That's what we gotta do. And we're gonna hear the sound of a baby chipmunk. Now that sounds so tiny. <laughs> that sounds so tiny. Now what I do know is that chipmunk that somebody recorded, that chipmunk was only two inches tall. That was a little itty bitty chipmunk. Wow, oh, aren't chipmunks super cool? All right, we've got about one minute left. Two minutes left. And it's that cheer up music. We're gonna do a little group activity. We're gonna use our bodies to communicate what we are pretending to be. Okay, so I hope you've got someone with you and maybe they can guess what you're pretending to be. Okay, so let's pretend to be a cat. You know what I'm doing? I'm pretending I've got a paw. My hands are paw and I'm rubbing it on my face. That's a very cat thing to do. Okay, this is a tricky one. Well, this is an active one. How about can you be a snake? How can you show to be a snake without making any sounds? Oh, okay, I'm on the ground. <laughs> All you can do is wriggle around, right? Because we can't make any noise, we can't make a sound. Okay, now, gonna be a tree how are you gonna be a tree I've just got my arms stretched right out okay and now we're gonna be a policeman a policeman okay I'll be a policeman Oh, policeman! We're not gonna pretend to be policemen. Get out of here! And that's all we got time for today. Thanks for tuning in to the Secret Kindergarten, and we'll see you at the next one. <laughs>